corner everybody it's your boy sean brooks happy black history month shout out to my idol he'll be newton um today's video is gonna be something a little bit uh you know again kind of goes in line or goes along with my whole idea of kind of providing you guys information on to become better business people or just kind of like how to start off this video business as a whole so got an email from my homie drew andrew warner make sure i link his down down in the description below but just like many of y'all ask me on IG, Facebook, wherever it is, man, like follow me everywhere on Brooks Media because I respond to everybody. But I get people to ask me these questions all the time. Like, yo, B, how are you, how are you surviving? How did you make it from being in corporate America for like 13 years to being able to run your full-fledged business how you do now? And the first thing, I, you know, before I even get to the question, the first thing I would say at the gate is with me working in corporate America for so long, I've structured my business as if I was still working in corporate America, right? So I still look at budgets, I still create P&Ls. Whatever the case is, I still run my business as if I was in corporate America and nothing's changed. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the four questions that he has. Now, before I get into the full question, I do want to let you all know the shooting settings because I've been trying to test something out. So right now we are in Cine 2 with the movie color profile and we shoot on the Sony 35mm f1.8 at f1.8. And so far, the full frame look, that blurry background. Mm. So the first question he asked me is, how are you able to get started in the industry and secure clients? So um, out the gate, it wasn't it wasn't easy for me to start off like uh, getting clients out the gate, right? So I was in like a lot of free videos. I was trying to reach out to people to do free videos and I was still getting turned down. Um, when I started to kind of secure the type of clientele that I wanted, there are two things that had to happen. One, I had to change my name from Sean B. Nice to Brooks Media. Now the reason why I had to change from Sean B. Nice is because honestly, it just doesn't have that that feel of like high quality corporate America type of thing, right? I'm looking for a specific type of clientele. Like Sean Be Nice to me is more so for like the trendy music videos or somebody who's trying to do like a lot of effects and you know, I, he's not aiming towards that corporate life or that corporate type of finance. Uh, so, you know, when I changed the name to Brooks Media, it instantly kind of opened up doors to me a little bit, if you will. Like, um, people like they, people even told me, like, yo, that just sounds sexy, that sounds more professional, it sounds like a production company I want to work with. So when I start to secure clients, one, I changed my name to something professional, and two, I up my prices. Now, I know y'all thinking, like, yo, B, how did that help you secure clients? I got you. The reason it helped you secure clients is because people like to pay for what they deem is like quality. I've actually had clients turn me down for being too cheap, right? So if your price, like, they look at your work, and your price doesn't reflect your work, you can still lose a client. So if they sitting there like, yo, we wanna work with you, blah, 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 we seen the quality of your work, and they like already in their head, let's just say they budget in like $5,000. You like, yo, I do it for $750. They like, you know, if your work is, you know what I'm saying, like this good, why are you charging so cheap for it? Maybe you're not that good, and I can't take these numbers back to my superiors, I can't even work with you. Like, I've legit had that happen to me. So I started to secure clients when I actually went up my prices. One thing I do want to add to this, right? Because there, there's also a thing to this, it's so, it's so expansive, right? But I would tell you this, network and me just kind of being a people's person, and if you will have a gift of gab, that helps me out a lot, right? Because you have to remember this, people, like there's going to be a lot more people who are more talented than you, and there's even more talented than me, but people only want to work with who they like. So no matter how good, um, you know what I'm saying, Peter McKenna's cousin is, if they only like you, they only gonna work with you anyway because they like you. So remember this, when you are selling a, a service, you're not actually selling a service, you're selling yourself. You are the brand, sell the brand, not the service. Hey, that was, for the first one I'm coming out the gate, that's fire. Yeah, you should have been here like already, I'm just saying. Moving on to number two, what, what challenges you face in the early stages? So again, this, I kind of touched on already in the first one, um, my name. So definitely have to change my name. Um, you know, kind of low balling. That was definitely a challenge for me, right? Kind of like even doing free work. For some odd reason, you know, people, even you reach out to on Instagram, people don't want to work with you. I guess if you offering something for free, man, like, or, you know, with, even when I was trying to do restaurant videos, for some odd reason, it's so hard to do free work. So what I recommend and suggest is that you actually just kind of start creating your other projects or start to like work with other creatives, right? Because when you start to work with other creatives, that's gonna kind of help you out of that slump. And now, you, now you're producing work that is still for you and it's still content that people can see on your portfolio to kind of see like how you get down. So if you can't like really get, like if you can't um, like get in, like in contact with a restaurant or like a hairstylist, I'm pretty sure you know a buddy who's an entrepreneur or who cooks, make a video for them. It's the same thing. like. I would say the early thing, like the, the thing that affected me early on most in my, like in my early stages, if that makes sense, um, was only reaching out to like a certain clientele, not reaching out to like all clientele, right? So I was only reaching out to actual established restaurants, established businesses, and not actually looking for, quote unquote, the smaller person, the smaller businesses, the smaller entrepreneurs, because they need ads too, and they're willing to pay you and pay me what I asked for. Number three, 
Uh, what opportunities did you take advantage of? Like shadow people, work as PA, etc. So to be real, I didn't really, um, I study Minecraft every day, right? So I really didn't have anybody I shadowed, to be real. Um, I already didn't see anybody who was kind of shooting like how I wanted to shoot, to, to be honest. So pretty much, the, I'll, I'll give you this, I'll give you the, the top five YouTubers that I look at as far as inspiration and to become better in my work. So number one is gonna be YC Imogen. Um, number two is gonna be Brandon Lee. Number three is gonna be Armando Ferreira. Number four is gonna be my girl, uh, Brittany Janae. Make sure you check her channel out, she's super dope. Uh, and then number five is gonna be, honestly, uh, what's my man name? I think his name was like Paul Judd or something like Judd. Like I don't know what I'm talking about, like the audio dude, bro. Like I, I watch his channel a lot, especially for audio tips. Like this dude, when it comes to audio equipment, he, he's he been doing that since I've been like in, in, in high school, I feel like, or college. Like my man's been in the game for like a long time. So those are the channels I definitely watch. I'll make sure I link down in the description below. Um, when I kind of like, when I wanted to learn stuff. Like, so YC Image and Brandon Lee are definitely up there for me. And there are definitely other channels. If I could think of them, I'll make sure I put down like my honorable mentions down in the comment section below. But I'm always studying my craft, you know what I'm saying? So I never really needed to kind of quote unquote shadow anybody um, because I didn't want to, within my shadowing, I didn't want to have their style kind of reflect on me, if, if that, you know, if that makes sense, right? Because I'm shadowing them. And let's say I'm, I'm doing a project to turn in for them like BTS, they're expecting me to kind of like shoot it the way they want it to be shot versus the way I want it to be shot. So no, I didn't shadow anybody. No, I didn't do PAs. Uh, a lot of this is honestly just, you know, groundwork to be real. Number four, what would you have done differently and can you offer any other advice? Yes. Um, great questions, by the way. So what I would have done differently was for sure, started off with a more professional name, right? So I want to start off with Sean B. Nice. Um, I would be a little bit more thought. I will, I will put a little bit more thought into the people that I reach out to, to do free work for. Again, like I told you before in the video, um, start to reach out to other entrepreneurs. Don't think just so one sided that you only could do promo work or spec ads for actual businesses. I, I would have started creating spec ads way earlier, right? Uh, whether it's like something like for like Nike, uh, whether it's something for Reebok, Adidas, whatever the case is, like I would have started kind of being a little bit more confident in my work and not putting so much pressure on thinking I have to shoot or, or create my videos like other people to kind of get hired. Um, I would say the early on best advice I can give you, brother, for real, for real, uh, or sister, who's over watching this, um, is to have confidence in yourself. If I could have started the game over, I would have, if I could have had this much confidence that I have now into what I do, I would be way further than where I am. Because again, like most of the stuff is really about believing in yourself. So the clients I started to get, the, the energy I started to put out to the universe, I don't, like, I don't, I don't, I'm not scared that I won't get clientele that I'm not going to eat, you know what I'm saying? Or like, I'm not going to have another check coming in. Like, I know I won't let me down, right? So I put that same energy out to the universe and, I, and the energy, you know what I'm saying? The universe gives that right back to me. I know we getting kind of like really out there, but that ass serious. Like it's, it's, you have to really believe in yourself. That's the best advice I can give to any videographer. If, you, if your confidence is not there, it's gonna show you your approach and it's gonna show in your work. So why would, I, why would somebody wanna hire me if I don't even sound confident in what I'm even giving them or producing for them? You know what I mean? So um, have confidence in yourself, don't give up. Like do not give up. There's days I had mental breaks, crying on my wife's arms and everything, but I didn't give up. Keep going. I'm gonna be doing this like for real for like for two years now and I'm making great strides. Don't compare yourself to anyone and be confident. Other than that, be like, you know, I, I think those are some great tips to start off. Uh, if you, you know, considering leaving your full-time job and becoming a full-on uh, video, you know, a videographer, just understand that it's not gonna be easy, um, but it will get better. Yeah, it definitely gets better.